Hi guys, this is Ferris with uh, StablePoint. Today we are talking about uh, embedded tracking in augmented reality. Uh, so we know that there's many applications, especially like gaming application, like uh, Pokemon Go, let's uh, work on that. And uh, ASU Lab uh, developed a hallucination uh, software, uh, which is try to present uh, augmented reality as like uh, in three D, without physically bringing the uh, physically bringing the object, is just like will you be used in presentation. And here we see uh, the uh, Mars rover. It's presented in one of the presentation, uh, showing that rover is huge. So uh, just like could present it without physically being there. So today uh, we will talk about the table of contact. Uh, content we try to uh, do a problem for the statement for the problem and what we did in last semester uh, and what we can do. Uh, before we do that, uh, there's socially uh, advantage of that. Since we are here, we're dealing with the coron coronavirus. Uh, to present an object without physically having it, it's a really good deal. And um, in the fall semester, uh, I've tried to talk about the problem statement here. So uh, the the problem with augmented reality is the inconsistent consistent of the video. Uh, it will be like a little bit, there's glitches and there's also shakiness. Uh, so we'll try to solve that issue. Hi, just uh, stopped by in uh, to talk about the fall semester. Um, yeah, so the fall semester, uh, main portion of it was just doing some research through the supplementary uh, materials that was given to us through our mentor, just understanding what the objective of the project is. Uh, through that, we decided that the project needed to be split in two through stabilization and localization. Uh, once we had those kind of uh, separations of resources settled, uh, we were able to set down some bomb sheets to order some parts, as well make some cuts. Um, and so for the next semester, it was more focused on towards uh, assembling these two items. Um, anyways, uh, to continue on, uh, Amr is going to be talking about the spring semester. This is Amr at uh, Stable Point, and this semester I'm going to talk about, uh, this time I'm going to talk about spring semester, which we're doing this semester. So uh, the last time, like last semester, we did talk about the gimbal and everything. This semester we're trying to uh, implement the gimbal, like build it and implement the tracking, embedded tracking system. Um, and we're trying to connect them together to do the whole project. Like that's the idea of the project. And project are gonna, so we, we did weekly project meetings and get charts to help us meet our goals on time. And uh, we, we, like we set tasks, we assign tasks to each member of the group to do. So. Some of us will do will stay on the gimbal, and some of us will do the tracking system, and we can help each other on the way, and we can tell each other how far we're going. And we like we started doing the budget report just to see like what's the total that we spent on this whole project. And the project meetings were we we started by meeting on Wednesday with Professor Robert weekly every Wednesday from twelve to twelve thirty ish. And the team meetings, so we meet on Monday from 4 to 6, and on Wednesday from 12.30 until 2 p.m. Uh, this is our Gantt chart that we did. We had it uh, split into two parts. So the first, like the first columns are for the gimbal, and then the second part, which is for the tracking system. So basically we split them into like testing, and then building the skeleton, and researching, and like everything and we had set dates. So this is the latest one that we have so far, which we're doing a good progress, I believe. Uh, and task assignments. So gimbal skeleton construction, it was like building the gimbal, the skeleton of the gimbal, and then uh, communicating with the B, like uh, the BGC, which is the uh, brushless gimbal controller, and and then the, for for the tracking system, we're we, we're doing um, so assembly circuit on board, uh, and then proving that it works, 
and everything. And then testing the VR with the Unity components. Budget-wise. Uh, so the budget-wise, this is how far we got. Like, we ordered all, the, all of the parts, as I said earlier. And the total spending was on the gimbal. Like, we split them into two tables. The gimbal part is the top part. As you guys can see, and the total spending was three twenty three dollars and thirty three cents. And the second part is that for for the tracking system, which was only forty four seven point forty nine cents. And the total like the total amount that we spent mostly to complete the whole project is three seventy and eighty two cents. Hey guys, Gabe here. I'm here to talk about the construction and assembly of specifically the gimbal, but later Gerardo will talk about the assembly of the tracking system. All right, now about the gimbal. We are focused on getting the cuts done, setting up the control system so we can control the brushless motors on the axis. This is so we can create complete stabilization amongst our camera, uh, make sure that we get a smooth transition when we're doing these presentations. Um, yeah, so some of the progress, we got all the parts together, uh, so everything necessary for the beginning of the semester, we have. Um, one of the big concerns we were here and follow is the health and safety considerations. Now, that's a big deal here. Uh, we want to make sure our team members are safe, uh, and that's when we're cutting the carbon fiber itself, which produces these, like, fiber components that you can breathe in. So, uh, in the next slide here, um, we can see that one of our teammates here is wearing all the appropriate equipment to, like, cut these carbon fibers and it's always a thing you have to uh, prepare for. So we have him having a particle filter mask, uh, he has some eye goggles, he's got a lab coat and gloves. Uh, gloves are even more important now during these times. Alright, uh, yeah, so about the assembly itself. So the requirements that we had was that it had to be a three axis gimbal, but most importantly it had to stabilize the camera itself. So it has to be able to read the movements of the camera, as well as being able to control the brushless motors. Now, as far as our progress goes, we were able to register the movements of like an eye view from the board itself, which is this right here, as well as a separate component from the I2C2 port. Um, yeah, and as well as we get the proper batteries for it, as well as uh, just making sure it's properly supplies. Unfortunately, the carbon fiber cutting has put to a stop during the unforeseen circumstances at the moment, since some of uh, our facilities are closed at the moment. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this is talking about the troubleshooting that we did for the gimbal itself. So currently at the moment, the gimbal is control system is not working to its full potential. Uh, it seems that the board itself has some errors uh, with the main I2C port, which is not registering the IMU, uh, but the I2C2 port is understanding and reading that. Um, but at the moment, uh, it has led us to mess with some advanced settings that have not helped us at the situation, which is necessary uh, to set up this control system. So at the moment, we are considering buying a new component, but this is more pushed forward towards using an Arduino instead, um, since we have some professional experience in that. And next up is Gerardo. Hello, my name is Gerardo Jimenez, and this is currently the tracking system construction plan. Main takeaways from this slide is that we have ordered and fulfilled all orders of the parts for the tracking system. We have verified these parts on the breadboard, and we are currently have already uploaded the Teensy software above them. Now we are going to be doing VR testing in this project. The tracking system construction progress so far has us fully assembled the tracking system on breadboard. We have already tested this on previous breadboard to ensure that it has actually carried out its function properly. Now, in our current progress, we are testing the HTC Vive Lighthouse. What this entails is we're using a Steam VR headset and Steam VR on the computer to ensure that the lighthouse properly locates the Steam VR and recognizes it in a room. Current problems that that is facing is that the lighthouse is not currently recognizing that Steam VR headset in the room. Possible problems as to why this is occurring is the display port is not appropriately appropriately connecting the Steam VR headset to the computer. Possible solutions to this is po is possibly buying an HDMI adapter port. This slide shows the orders that we have currently fulfilled. It has all the parts we have obtained to finish the construction of the tracking system. 
We discussed this and justified each order with Robert, our mentor, and then we verified the parts were properly functioning once we obtained them. One thing that we did for our orders is we extra we ordered extra parts to ensure that we, if we did obtain any faulty parts, we had extras on hand, and also if we broke any during testing. Initial testing had us building the tracking system on a breadboard. But when we did this, what we were going to do is use the photo dials to pick up a red LED to ensure that it was properly carrying out this task. This was realized once we did begin testing on this and we connected it to an oscilloscope to ensure that it did pick up the signal and in this photo it has appropriately, appropriately picked it up. The current tracking system troubleshooting has the Steam VR headset and the HTC Vive Lighthouse testing in unison to ensure that the lighthouse is appropriately, appropriately picking up the Steam VR headset in the room as to ensure that it's carrying out its function. Once we know that this is being done, then we can use the lighthouse to track the tracking system in the room and position it properly. The problems that it's currently facing is the Steam VR headset is not being recognized by the HTC Vive Lighthouse in the room, and we believe this has to do with the display port that is connecting the Steam VR headset to the computer. And a possible solution to this would be buying an HDMI adapter port to use to connect the Steam VR headset. A quick analysis of our tracking system here presented in this picture has the main outline. Main, uh, a quick analysis of our tracking system has has it pictured here on the breadboard. The main takeaways from this are photo diodes and 3D platform. We constructed the 3D platform ourselves using the 3D printer, and the photo diodes were ordered. The photo diodes are the main component that are picking up the LED signals to ensure that it can be tracked properly by the HTC Vive Lighthouse. Future Plans has us fully assembling the tracking system and then uploading the VR code software. This has us prioritizing the tracking system due to unforeseen circumstances that have virtually closed almost every lab related to construction of the gimbal. Current plans regarding the gimbal is hopefully constructing the custom gimbal ourselves but if things don't pan out as we plan, then we will just purchase one. Once we have accomplished these two main tasks, then we will test both the embedded tracking system and the gimbal together to ensure that it has stabilized the presentation properly and the augmented reality object inside it. So, so thank you very much for listening in uh, and have a great day.